welcome to my garden. Today I am going to show you everything that you need to know about growing lemongrass. I have gotten so many requests about um, viewers wanting to know how they can grow their own lemongrass and I just not have not had the time to make this video but here you go. I'm going to show you everything I know about lemongrass. Okay, I started growing lemongrass about um, four years ago and I simply took a stalk of lemongrass that I picked up at the farmer's market and you can find it at your local Asian market and I put it in some water in a windowsill and voila it started to grow roots. Now it did take a while for it to grow roots and um, I think I bought about three of them and two of them grew roots and the other ones the other one kind of rotted away so if you have to start it from a dry piece of lemongrass that you pick up at your Asian market pick up several so that you'll the chances of you getting some that root will be greater okay best thing to do too is to call your Asian market find out when they get their fresh shipment in and go over there and get it then okay so um, if you know and I'll also show you how to pick out the best stock for propagating because what you'll want is to get some of the um, end that has some of the roots still attached to it versus something that's been cut and dried out. You will not get roots from that, okay? So, um, now I will show you that if you are able to get a cutting, um, how you can go ahead and propagate that. What you will do is you will take it and just put it in a jar in a windowsill and then you get roots from that too. You'll get them quicker if you can get a fresh cut piece. And that's what I do every season. Every season, I will take um, some of this lemongrass that I have grown and I will keep it in my windowsill all winter long <laughs> and until spring. And then that's when I transfer it out. And I usually, I usually do about 12 pieces. So I have 12 plants, okay? And you think, I'm just keeping it in water for five months? Yes, that's what I do and it does fine. So don't worry about that. And I have to keep the water changed though. If you do not keep the water changed, and like every two days or so, and if you don't, it'll get smelly anyway, and you'll want to change it. So I really suggest that you do that every two days just to keep oxygen going in there. And I don't feed it anything. It just does it fine on its own. So what I want to do is show you some examples of some containers, okay, that I left outside last year in my zone, which is 6B, and we had snow. And um, in those containers, lemongrass died back. And and then it came back in the spring and it did fine but it didn't get very big all right now the cuttings that I had that I kept in my windowsill I transferred those to um, some areas in my garden and to some other containers and they did great so I recommend that you start your lemongrass from a cutting versus living in a container because lemongrass gets very root bound it's a clumping grass it won't spread underground um, so in the container, you're mostly, you mostly have all this root and not much room for it to get new roots, new growth, and to produce a larger plant. So I'm going to show you here in just a minute some of my containers that I actually started lemongrass from, I prop, propagated last year, and then some that I left outside and just let the containers regrow naturally. This came back in my in-ground garden great. I mean, it's produced beautifully. It was here last year. It died back and came back again. Okay, so let's take a walk here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, these pots right here are um, some that I left outside just to see how they would do. And they died back and I'll show you um, how big they got. Now these were really nice and big and healthy last year. So that's one that I just let come back in the container. I left them outside. Okay, and this is one that I grew in a container which I propagated the stock so it came out of my windowsill into a four inch pot until the frost uh, threat was over and then I moved it out into this container outdoors. And I'll take you one other place for some lemongrass that I brought inside in the container to show you how big it got. Okay, here's an example of some lemongrass that I brought inside my house and left it inside over the winter. So you can compare this to the ones in the same kind of container that I left outside and then it died and came back. So this one's been living since last summer. And I guess the main difference that I would like to show you on this is the size of the stalks. And that's what you want. You want big stalks for cooking. That's what makes it good. Okay, and these have turned a nice purple color. Now this container's dried out a little bit as you can tell. 
but this is really beautiful linen grass right here. I could pull this out right here and it would be unbelievable for cooking right now. Okay, so um, what I will do is harvest this too. And if I can't use it in a dish probably this week, I will go ahead and freeze it or propagate it. But I think I'm going to have to use this because it's not, there's nothing better than fresh lemongrass, especially when it's just perfect. You want it nice and purple like this. This means that you've got some really, really nice lemongrass. This is a plant that I had in my garden last year and it died over the winter and then it came back and it's really nice and healthy. It, it loves this spot and it's doing great. And this one is one I put in my garden um, that I had propagated. So it came from my windowsill into a little pot and then when we were free of any frost I moved it out into my garden. This plant is not quite as healthy as the other one. Could be that it's really just its first year's growth. Okay. Okay, this is kind of a um, different situation. Um, this was a big container that I had on my deck. And um, I don't know how many gallons this container is. Probably 15, I'm not sure. But um, at any rate, I had some extra stalks of lemongrass I had propagated. that had a pretty extensive root system on them. But I didn't have anywhere to put them, so I just stuck them in this pot here. And as you can see, they did fine. And I would uh, guess that that pot there is probably completely root bound. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you these at a close up so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these out so you can see me actually pull some out of the ground and um, cut them for propagation. I will begin to cut these for propagation uh, for next year's garden. Okay. Now in the middle there, this is Gollingal and it uh, survived my winter last year as well and it came back so I was, that was kind of an experiment for me um, but I'm not going to pull that out but I will show you some of this lemongrass here what you will need is a, a knife with a very good blade on it okay a good serrated blade because you want to get down there near the roots okay. <clears throat> now to make it easier to harvest lemongrass you'll want to go ahead and take off your upper blades first these can cut you and that's why I especially wear gloves whenever I work with it, for sure. These upper blades can be saved for tea. It smells so wonderful. It's just wonderful. What I'll do is I'll remove all of the brown blades from here, and I will tie it, or I'll, or I'll chop it down and put it in my dehydrator, either one. If I have enough, I'll um, put it in my dehydrator. If I don't, you can just tie it and hang it upside down in a cool area preferably somewhere dark and you will have lemongrass for tea. When you're cutting your blades do not go too low. If you do you're going to cut into the part you want to keep for cooking. Down here towards the bottom is the part that's tender and that you will use for cooking. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out below the soil line and pull this out and show you if I were to propagate this what kind of piece I would need to get a good root going. Now over here is some more gollingle that has spread. Um, gollingle does that and had I known that it was going to come back, I probably wouldn't have put this lemongrass in here because now, by then, I would have a nice, beautiful gollingle plant. Um, but instead, the lemongrass crowded it out. But live and learn, I suppose. All right, so all I'm going to do, if I were getting just one piece, number one, I probably would not cut the blades off. Okay, if I were getting just one piece, I would come down here and just cut it off like this. and then twist it and this I would use for cooking um, and this also is a great example for what I would use for propagating as you can see I cut way below 
this, um, the base of the lemongrass. So I have some of the root system right here, okay? So this I could stick in water, and in a few weeks, I would expect to see roots growing from it. And also, these blades would start to grow too. So I would have another huge growing plant of lemongrass. So let's um, continue to harvest some more. And I'm just going to go down here below the root line and cut it out. And we'll give it a little twist. Okay. And let me take out some of these side leaves that I, I'll show you a few things. Okay, right here. This is beautiful, beautiful lemongrass. This is what you want for cooking, nice and thick. Now on the side here, this is one that's not so big. This one I won't, you can use this, but I want to use it for propagating because it'll stay nice and small and next year it'll be nice and big like this. Okay, so this one I'll put it to the side to grow for next um, spring's garden. Let's see how many I have in here. If you live in a warm tropical area too, you will have a blast growing this because you won't have to take it in and out all the time and it'll grow almost all year long. This one is in the middle. I'm not sure if I want to use it for cooking or propagating, so I'm going to just use it for propagating because these are perfect for cooking here. This one's just a little bit too small still. Another nice one for cooking, and you know it's nice because again it's got these purple leaves starting to come out. This is what time of year that it's beautiful in my area. This is the time of year I want to harvest this, and if I can't use it right away, it's going to get peeled, the outside leaves. I will take off, I'll wash it, and I'm going to uh, vacuum seal it and put it in my freezer. Okay, and this is great. This is beautiful, beautiful stuff. Now this is one I would not use for propagating. I cut into the base of the lemongrass, um, um, into the base of the stalk, the very tender part, and though I might get roots from that, I might not. So um, I won't take up a mason jar space for that one because I know that if I use something different, like one like this, that actually has the little root coming out the bottom right here, instead of this one. I know I'm going to get some growth from that one. That's the one I'll keep. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Right here is what I'm going to use for propagating, and over here is what I will use for cooking. So I'm going to go ahead and take these inside, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. Okay, once I've harvested my lemongrass, now I'm going to prepare them either for propagation or cooking. Um, and I say cooking because I'm going to freeze these for later cooking. So you, some of the outer leaves have already been removed. Um, when you use it for cooking, you're not going to use the tough part of the lemongrass, which is the outer leaf. And so we will remove that. Okay, and I will cut off the end. Okay. And let me see. I might just go ahead and remove one more outer leaf. Uh, still, that's kind of nice and but it's still a little tough, so let me go ahead and get out the, that very other outer leaf there. Okay, and then I want to cut it about right here. And this I'll save for cooking. So what I'll do is when I pull it out of the freezer to cook it, I will cut off this end here, because this is woody and tough, and I'll probably cut off about to right here. So I'll have two inches. This is a nice tender part, and then this other part here, up this way, I'll just leave it whole and I might just throw it in whatever soup it is that I'm cooking or curry and then I'll remove that part before I eat it. 
this part I will mince down and I will eat that when I'm cooking with lemongrass. Okay, so these I'm going to put in a freezer bag after I wash them good. I'm going to get them all trimmed up first, then I'll wash them and again, let them dry, and then they're going to go into a freezer bag. So I just have a little mason jar right over here with some water in it. And I'll go ahead and put the ones I'm going to propagate right there. Okay, and then over here, I'll go ahead and pull these bigger pieces. This one I want to keep for cooking. Okay, now I'll show you a really good example of nice lemongrass. Um, the base of the lemongrass starts to turn a purple color. And so let me show you what it will look like when you cut into a good piece of lemongrass. Okay, and let me cut off this end here so I can show you. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. Let me see if I can get it into the light for you. Okay, there are little purple rings in there, and that is a really good lemongrass to cook with. That's what you want. That's where you have a lot of flavor, it's real mature, and this is a, a good piece. Now, you won't cook with these outer leaves. When I freeze, so normally if I freeze my lemongrass, I like to cut a little bit into the root area there, so this is nice and hard, but because I wanted to show you the inside, I cut into the lemongrass, and so I'm still going to go ahead and freeze this, but if you're putting it up for storage, try to cut it into the little root part so it's nice and hard there, it won't dry out your lemongrass. You've got it kind of, it almost serves as a little cap on there to keep it from drying out. So last year I um, vacuum sealed my smaller stalks of lemongrass, so these are frozen solid. And um, this is good too. You can save your smaller stalks certainly for cooking. Um, I, can, I use this to infuse water. I like to make an infused water like with mint and lemongrass and it's real refreshing. So that's what that's for. I have a lot of this. And so now I'm just going to freeze this quite differently this year however. So I'll just put it loosely here in this bag. Okay. Now I have a lot more lemongrass to harvest this year and so I um, discarded my blades um, because I don't really need those right now. I still have a lot of um, lemongrass blades from last year's harvest that I use for tea. <laughs> so um, I um, will not be using the ones that I pulled off of here, but you certainly can save your lemongrass blades as I mentioned before. And so I'm going to, I've got a few more um, plants to harvest, and so I'll put those in here too, and then they're going to go straight in my freezer for um, cooking. Alrighty, thanks for watching. It's February 2nd, and this is the lemongrass that I propagated in October. Put it in the jar and in my windowsill, and I'll just show you a few of them now. Here's the root system on here. And um, so I think I have about, I think I have about 10 total. And they're all real nice. They're looking pretty good.